Welcome back. Many thanks for staying with us. Now, the People's National Congress is one of Ghana's oldest political parties, but also one of the parties whose political fortunes have steadily declined over the years. There have been talks of mergers with other uh, Nkrumah's parties, but skeptics say that will never happen. What has been witnessed instead is a myriad of controversies. Today, we engage General Secretary of PNC, uh, National Chairman of PNC, <laughs> he just looked at me, Bernard Mona, on some of those controversies and the future of the party. Bernard, you're welcome. I like the way you looked at me. First is that we are not a Congress. We are a convention. Oh, convention. And uh, a second is that the spelling of my name, I don't know why you no, can't no, catch no. it. That, don't worry, that then won't show on the TV. Third is that, thank you for welcoming <laughs> me. <laughs> that will show on the TV, but thank you for that correction. Um, it's, it's, it's good to have you here, but what's this for? Are you okay? I'm very okay. Um, it's my new um, dress, part of my new style. So, uh, why, why so? I'm supposed to be here with a beret. Unfortunately, my car is not with me. Okay. And so my beret is not with me. Otherwise, I use blue beret, black, and then red berets. Okay. And then, of course, you know that walking stick is one of the things that Nkrumah used to like. And then, um, I so, just, uh, so it's not like you have a problem with your leg no, or anything? No, 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 no. I see. Now, if you want, well, I can get up for you. No, no, no. Say. If you don't have a problem mm. with your leg, that's okay. No, I'm, I'm good. I, I can throw this off. Uh, and, and actually, and I bought this fine. one from Kumasi. I like walking sticks. I see. Uh, I, I see. This one okay. Well, let's get on with our conversation mm -hmm. ab about uh, the PNC. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the major talks. How far is it? The last time we spoke, I, I, I spoke to one of your executives at the time. This must be not last year or so. Uh, we were told that you were going to go into a meeting. Uh, there was going to be a very big congress or so where all of the executives of those parties were going to meet and things were going to you know, move rather fast. But it doesn't seem so. <laughs> Do you want an honest answer? Please, that's why we're here. Unless all the answers you've been given over the years are not honest Not enough. if you want an honest answer, because sometimes you have to massage the answers in order to um, meet certain um, conditions because Don't you massage. are a leader. Um, Give us an honest answer. My honest view is that people are too selfish, people are too greedy, People are excited about the small titles we hold. People want to be called youth organizers, no matter how little or insignificant it is. People want to become women's organizers, general secretaries, national chairmen, and above all, flag bearers. Whether it leads to any significance, it doesn't matter. They just want to hold that title. Mm. And to that extent, people are not willing to let go these small titles in order to achieve a greater mm. um, um, goal for all of us. So when you hear people say that it is about name or it's about symbol, I can tell you as somebody who started as a student leader of my party, became national youth organizer, rose to become general secretary and now national chairman, I can tell you that name and symbols are always the things that we use to scatter the unification. But behind it is the issue of ego. It must be me or not. Behind it is the issues of, of it what must you be, have raised. Yes, it must be somebody greed, greed selfishness, selfishness uh, people's mm. tendency to hold on to, to little, little posts. Post. You, you understand? So that is what is keeping us away. So and it is no not even about... It is not even about ideology and where we all belong to low. I, I, Selfishness to, and greediness. Let me tell you. Let me tell that, you. That and any time, any time, let me give you two instances to justify my case. In 2016, because mm -hmm. it's the latest, okay. we nearly clinched a deal. Mm -hmm. We started this movement and it got to a point where the CPP presidential candidate was almost willing to become the running mate to Dr. Edward Nasigri Mahama. Okay. And Nasigri Mahama was willing to become the presidential candidate using the political party CPP. Okay. And Ivor Kobina Green Street will become the running mate mm -hmm. under that title. So Edward Mahama more or less agreed to become a CPP. Okay. It got to the point where it was almost for Papa Kwe Sindum to become the chairman of the United team. Mm -hmm. 
Then all of a sudden, Papa Kwesindum says that he is here to receive endorsement from his party as a presidential candidate because Edward Mahama had received endorsement. Ivor is coming to the table as presidential candidate. So he must also go and get that endorsement. So Papa Kwesi left to go and secure that endorsement. Whilst we are at date, we are still pushing. And you can ask Dr. Adai Sebo Achiaba, mm. who was more or less one of the mediators. Then we pushed further. And it was like, okay, if the PPP was unwilling to come on board, let this PNC and CPP go okay. ahead with it. It didn't take long then I realized that some statistics started coming. That look, within the disabled community, you have about one million people within the disabled community. Mm -hmm. And that the one million people will lend votes to the CPP presidential candidate because he had the same fate. Okay. And therefore, he comes to the table with a bigger baggage. So if the tables will not re uh, return to him becoming a presidential candidate, then it should not happen. So he wanted to be the presidential <coughs> candidate so that perhaps Dr. Mahama would be Come the, the running mate. Running and meanwhile, mate. the understanding was simple. Look, if Edward Mahama is to become presidential candidate, he ran on the ticket of the P uh, CPP. If okay, I but who, how did you get to that understanding? We wrote to them. We, we had a series of meetings. Dr. Adai Ad Ad Sebao Achiamba and co-mediated Dr. Donir. They came all the way from Germany and other parts, some from KNUST, mm. uh, to come and meet with us. So and the CPP did. agreed? They agreed until the... In fact, on the 25th of May 2016, I was even invited to the CPP headquarters mm. to join in the African Liberation Day celebration. And apparently... On the 26th, there was a meeting between Edward Mahama, Adai uh, Sibok, and Professor Edmond Dele mm. at Edmond Dele's office, where he said that on the 19th of May 2016, the CPP had taken a decision at their central committee that they should go into the 2016 elections as CPP. As CPP. And therefore, they were and, not... And, and how long ago had you mm. agreed to and meanwhile, come together? Meanwhile, we had pushed everything, and I had even asked our presidential candidate to subordinate his campaigns so that we can get this number. So when on the 26th, Edwin Mama returned to us with the news that the CPP is going alone, Look, I got broken. I, I, I wanted to find out when the, the, the group made the decision that... We started meeting from January 2016 seriously because we had been meeting in part. Okay. And by March, we were almost at the conclusion. Right. We stalled because the PPP had not gotten a presidential candidate and eventually were willing to go ahead with the CPP unification. I see. And so when it got to that point... And I told Edwin Mondele, for instance, that look, I was willing to demit my position as chairman mm -hmm. for us to unite. And okay. I've maintained that position time without number. Okay. Because you see, I have traversed the length and breadth of this country. Mm. And I've moved from various institutions, including media houses, banks, and other places. And you meet top management. And they tell you that, look, we are of your tradition. But the way you people are scattered, we are unable to, to come together. To come so to let me get this straight. So let, where let, I no, say no, honestly... Let me just make sure that I'm on the right, I'm on the same page with you. So um, three of you, the CPP, the PNC, and the PPP agreed to come together. Mm -hmm. And this was as far back as January 2016. Mm -hmm. Now when you made that agreement... That is the latest. The latest, yes. But no, there is a current ongoing movement which I will discuss okay. with you on. So when you, when you agreed on that, Dr. Papakwesi Indum was supposed to be the chairman of the entire group. Yes. And But he was not supposed to be the, um, the presidential flag bearer. Yes. Okay. So he was supposed to be... Dr. Indum was supposed to be the, uh, the chairman of that group. Mm -hmm. Dr. Edward Mahama was supposed to be the presidential candidate, candidate, and then Ava Green Street would the, have been the, the running man. The running but mate. Edward Mahama would have run on the ticket of CPP. CPP. So what you are coming if together Ivo, as CPP. If Ivo was to run as presidential candidate, he was to run on the ticket of the PNC. And okay. then it eventually, I mean, talking, we, so, we have informal so, so, discussion. So then Mr. Green Street comes up and says, okay, uh, Look, he I did not come out, but how did he it, get no, the it, it, it was a team that came out and said, Look, Bernard, um, you know, the disabled community is about one million votes, mm -hmm. and so their sympathies will naturally be towards our presidential candidate. I'm here to check the figures whether they got one million votes I in see. the last elections. And at this point, where was Dr. Indum? Um, Dr. Indum had then opted out to say that, look, he has not yet received the endorsement of his party as presidential candidate. Okay. So he could not come to the table with the same capacity as Ivor Green Street and Edward Mahama.
I see. And so is this where you say you see the greed and the selfishness? Oh, and that all of the one started as far back as I was a youth organizer. Mm. When we started having meetings, I think Anani was the CPP youth organizer or the PNC youth organizer. I remember at some point when we decided that the youth wing should promote the unity, I decided that we should always go to the CPP headquarters to have meetings. So on one occasion, we were locked out. The leadership of the CPP came and locked the CPP headquarters so that we cannot have access to promote the agenda of unification. Why? Then it was um, Professor Edmond Dele, who was chairman, and um, 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 uh, Professor Ninoy Douna was the general secretary. They locked us out. We still had a meeting outside of the CPP headquarters. We did a series of press conferences under the party action group. But this did not materialize. Then I recall that there was another meeting that eventually led, at that time, Prezi Pratt, for instance, was the publicity and communication director of the Convention People's Party. Then I remember that eight regions had agreed that from the CPP side, because the PNC had gone and we came and said, look, all our regions had agreed mm -hmm. that we should go into unity unconditionally. So the CPP needed regional endorsement. Mm -hmm. They went for their um, neck meeting, and eight regions endorsed that, look, they were for it. And I remember then Park Sindum was with the CPP, and then uh, uh, Freddie Blay was with the CPP. And they got up and challenged that, look, the neck is not made up of regions, that there were individuals who were not made up of regions. So and therefore, that thing was scattered at that point. But you would have noticed that at that point, Freddie Blay and Park Sindum were almost working to take the soul of the CPP. And eventually, that led to Park Sindum becoming the presidential candidate of the CPP. Okay. So and you know, I'm saying that in all these things, when somebody's interest is not being served, then they tend they, to scatter, they scatter the, 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 the whole idea. Okay, I see. It's interesting uh, that you that you mentioned that. But you said there was uh, the latest development. The on latest this. development Quick is that is that we we this. decided to meet under a banner, not even on the various political parties, but people with like minds. And one of And we met first in the and we had a meeting. meeting. And to my surprise, somebody brought minutes of that meeting and came and said, Hello, we met to so that we can depose Edward Mama as the leader of the PNC. And I'm saying, What? And the latest I heard was that, look, I am fostering for us to unite because I want to become running mate to Papa Kwesi Indu. And I'm like, that's not true? I'm like, honestly. That's not true. How it's not true. Okay. First so and it, foremost, it's it beats not true. Your mind. First and foremost, it's not true. But what it does is that it dampens spirit. Because but, they've but seen what's that. What's wrong if you want to be. No, I will come to that. First and foremost, it dampens spirit because I put up my all. I am interested in us okay. coming together. I am willing to relinquish and demit my position mm -hmm. as chairman and so we can have been misinterpreted. Then at the end of the day somebody who goes to take this minute and before you realize they have even taken it to some courtesies that are not mattered okay you understand and then okay. they go and they are discussing and i'm like first and foremost who says that if we unite i'm not qualified to become presidential candidate Okay. That is that you something that you'd love that to do? That you think that I want to become running mate. That is, is first. Is this something you'd love I, to I have do the be a presidential candidate? I have the qualification to be a presidential candidate, one. Is that something you'd like I to do? I don't run away. I because am, having the qualification is one thing. Wanting to do it is another. Is I that something started, you'd like to do? I started as a youth organizer. Before then, I was a student leader. I founded the tertiary institutions functionary of the PNC. I have gotten the endorsement of my party to be general secretary for I take it it's something you'd love to do. I have worked to become national chairman. I take it chairman. it's something you'd love to do. I should aim at the luminous summit. You should, okay. So that answers it. It's something you'd love to do. I look forward to that day when you become presidential. Provided uh, you be pres my running mate. Presidential, <laughs> <laughs> presidential uh, candidate. Give me, give me the assurance that when I become, you become my running mate. I would mate. become your running mate. Very good. So. But I'll be here to do the news. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's get a, a bit more deeper into the PNC. It is said, or it is like a public knowledge, or a conspiracy theory, a school of thought. That the PNC is broken along party, uh, partisan lines, other partisan lines. That there is, if you take the PNC today, you see a faction that belongs to the NDC, you see a faction that belongs to the NPP. How far is that true? I cannot discredit people's opinions sitting here. 
you have your nose. I have Those my... are their opinions, but we want Yeah, the I'm saying that I you. cannot discredit that. You have your nose, I have no, my nose. Opinions are like noses, and everyone has his or her nose. First and foremost is that, look, the PNC speaks on issues. And these days, I'm sure, most often when you call me on a program and you say, oh, somebody from a political party has made a statement, do you agree? I tell you, sorry, I will not do that interview. Because as soon as I make a comment on it, it is reported that the PNC agrees with that particular person or that party on a mm. certain stance. Okay. And therefore, the PNC stance is not distinct. Okay. And so first, that is what people want. The other important thing that one must know is that, for instance, the PNC has been in parliament until now. Anytime we go to parliament, there is a compellence by the rigid nature of our parliament to sit either with the majority well, or I the minority. Mm. There is no multi-party in our parliament. There is a bipartisan parliament. You must belong to one or two. Mm. There is no three. So whilst the constitution admits multi-party democracy, our parliament agrees on a dual or a two-party um, system mm. where you must necessarily belong to the MPP or, or you belong NDC. to the NDC. Mm. And so when you go there, you are consumed. Your independent views as a political party are not brought out. So is that any, the reason why that the is one of the reasons. Indeed, NDC indeed, NDC. the PNC had gone on many occasions to Parliament to say that amend your standing orders so as to reflect the spirit of multi-partisanship. But then this is part of the reason why the, the, in the PNC you find NDC. And For NDC. instance, let me give you let me give you the instance. There is an issue that is of national concern. A budget has been presented. Mm -hmm. The NDC has some views. I come and say that the budget is an austere budget because the budget is going to curtail expenditure from government. And any time government is restrained... We'll, we'll talk about the budget. I'm, so coming let's to that. Take, I'm, I'm just making a, a, an example okay. of it. Okay, so, so when I come, too much about when I come to say that, look, this budget statement is an austere budget, it is imposes hardship, it doesn't liberate resources for generation of employment. Mm. The opposition NDC also go to say that. People come and say, you belong to the NDC. But that's oversimplifying the issue. No, because it is people won't just look at that trend, that one Let me tell you, anytime to, I, to, to I, I speak, people come and say, you speak for the NDC. I've heard people come and say, your general secretary, Atik Mohammed, speaks for the MPP. There are instances Atik has been very acidic on the MPP, just as I've always been. There are issues that have disagreed policy-wise and ideologically with the NDC that I don't compromise. So, so, so hold on. So the, now, we need what to answer this question: whether or not the PNC inside the PNC are a, NPP and NDC. The, I, th I think you've answered. The, there, are, there are sympathies. There are sympathies. There are sympathies. Strong because sympathies that sort There are sympathies, for instance. Co that causes confusion within the party. I'm sure that sitting in multimedia Joy FM or Joy TV, yeah? mm. Joy, Joy News. Joy News. Beyond Joy News, you have sympathies maybe to work for BBC, not CNN. That's it. That's it. No, that's no a I'm just saying professional, that. That's a career projection. Uh, why? Who said that politics is not a career thing? No, no, no. We're looking at the politics. No, well, I'm, that just, I'm, I'm just giving us, hey, hey, okay, take so, your time. So, so take let's your time. take so I'm saying that to the issue. The, the, I'm saying that. Uh -huh. So people have the second best. And in the second best, there may be some people within the PNC who will say that, look, because my uncle is of the MPP, mm -hmm. if I am not a PNC, I'll prefer to be in the MPP. There are somebody who will say that, look, oh, me, I just love the style of JJ. So because if I'm not in PNC, my next political party will be the NDC. There are people in the NDC and MPP who will tell you that, look, because of Bernard Mona, if I'm not going to be in MPP, I will join the PNC. They, those holdings are there, and therefore there is a soft spot mm. in all of us. Are you MPP or NDC? I am PNC. Based on the, based on the explanation you've given I am me, PNC. Where is your soft spot? I am PNC. Your soft spot is with the NDC or is with the MPP? My soft spot is that I'm PNC. Well, there is, there is the talk of town that is with the MPP. Um, maybe they would have given me chairman at large. And, uh, and, 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 uh, and that Atik is more of an NDC person. Um, maybe you have turned the tables. I've heard many people say that, look, I speak the for the way NDC. Around. I hear people say Atik is of the MPP. Then in one breath, I go and hear my friends in the MPP say that, oh, Atik has changed you. Look at the way he's bashing us. I then see. I'm like, really? 
So anytime somebody bashes you, it means that the person doesn't like you. You let mentioned me give Ambassador you, let me at give, large. No, let me, no, let me no, give no, you, because of our time. Let, let me give you some time, small, let, small Because aspect. there's a lot that we want to talk yeah, about. Let me give you some small. Let me tell you. When President Nana Akufa de delivered his first State of the Nation address, mm -hmm. you, I think, interviewed me. And I was very livid that the President came in a trade peace suit to Parliament to tell the people of Ghana that he was interested in promoting the local garment industry. And you can check on your records. I was very angry that your outfit does not support the arguments you were making in your State of Nation address. My friends in MPP took me to the cleanest. Today, by whatever advice, President Nana Akufado dresses almost 90% of the time in African prints and he looks handsome, gorgeous. <laughs> okay. And I'm sure that is promoting the local fabric um, uh, industry. What that means is that our criticisms can lead to something positive. It should, actually. But let's talk about Ambassador Alad, something that you mentioned. How is he, Dr. Mahama? Honestly, I've not seen him in a very long while. Has he been posted anywhere? If my understanding of Ambassador at Large is right, he's not supposed to be posted anywhere. Well, we understand that the, he could be posted anywhere. No, he's not, not supposed to be posted place. anywhere. I, I don't work in his office. I don't even know whether he has an office. I don't th think so. I think that he. But you agreed. I mean, the party agreed. We for did him not to take because we did not know that Edwin Mahama was being appointed. Despite that, it turned out that as far as January 2017, President Anakufado had intimated to him that he was going to give him such appointment. He never whispered to us in the party so that we can prepare ourselves for it. It came as a shock to the party. And but I'm that has been accepted now. No, no, we have not because I still maintain. I thought you went for a neck meeting and no, then you had a conversation the, about uh, it. Unfortunately, there was no discussion about that. In fact, what was happening at that particular neck meeting was that the neck was asking him to explain what it means to be an ambassador at large, what role he was supposed to perform, and he said at that meeting that, look, he is here to sit with the president for the president to tell him what functions he was supposed to perform. And that as at that time, he didn't even know what he was supposed to do as ambassador so at as large. So as of now, the year is almost coming to an end. You still don't know? We don't know. Have you, have you tried to reach him and find out how he's doing? No, the party so will meet. Um, this week we have, unfortunately, some two key persons of our party passed away. Our Doma oh, party sorry. national chairman passed on Sule. And um, we commiserate and sympathize with the family. Mm. Our um, candidate also in uh, Kwame Dansu lost their mom. And all the funerals are coming this way again. So the party is a bit tight in, okay. with these funerals. So we want to deal with that and possibly next week or so mm. we should be calling a meeting to possibly understand where we His stand post. on this matter and also because Atik's lawyers have written to the party. I was just coming to that at, about Atik Mohammed. Is, what is he in the party now? He is our general secretary. Has he been suspended? There has been a release to that effect. His lawyer has written to us mm -hmm. to say that they, they wrote a letter of non-recognition of the decision of mm. NEC they have specified the reasons for which NEC does not have the capacity to take or institute the kind of measures mm -hmm. they have. And they are asking NEC to sit down to correct its own um, injuries. And so it is my duty as national chairman to call on NEC to invite the party lawyers to come and sit in to give us their legal opinion. What do you stand on this? I think that his dismissal was inappropriate or his suspension, suspension. was inappropriate. I have said that time without number. And as national chairman, I just can't sit down to superintend. Look, whether I like Atik Mohammed or not, those who know me leading to election 2016, they know that I vigorously opposed and campaigned against Atik Mohammed becoming general secretary. But the fact that he had become general secretary means that the party says I should work with him. Whether I like him or not, I must defend his right to the last drop of my blood. Let's talk a, a quick, uh, <coughs> see if we can have a quick conversation about the Kufado administration. In September, you, re, you sent a press release that's praising the government for, uh, I'm talking about the PNC. Really? Praising, yes, praising the government for the free SHS policy. <laughs> I don't think I got that wrong. You, and, and, but then there's been major challenges with the policy mm -hmm. and its implementation. We haven't heard you on that yet. First, let me say that as a policy, as a party stance, we have always insisted that education should be a right and not a privilege. We have also said that if you go to Article 25 of the 1992 Constitution, it spells out clear. Article 25 is talking about primary education. 
two is talk, uh, B is talking about secondary education, and even C is talking about university education or tertiary education that must be progressively made free. Mm. If you go to the directive principles of state policy under Article 38 of the 1992 Constitution, it reinforces the fact that education is not a right, but a, 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 it's not a privilege, but a right, right. that every one of us has the right to ascertain or assess education to the highest level. Now, if you put monetary um, impediments on the way, many people in our society will not be able to achieve that. So in the PNC manifesto, you can more or less say that we have extracted the directive principle of state policy and we have put it as a PNC policy. So we support hook, line, and sinker, the full implementation of uh, a free that, that's why people expect to hear from you we when, 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 when there are major challenges uh, facing the I am going to talk about the challenges. So we have said this time without number. And indeed, you recall that it was the PNC that mooted the idea that look, food in our schools, particularly at the basic level, has a way of incentivizing poor persons to go to school. Now and I we, Dr. We, on that. Yeah, we talked about school feeding program, uh, program, and then I recall the then general secretary of the MPP, Dan Botry, um, now minister for regional reorganization, saying that they should ask us where we're going to get the money to implement uh, such a policy. Today's school feeding program, in spite of the fact that it's implemented in a very bizarre manner, it is obvious that it is obvious that. Um, the school feeding program has leaped the number of persons that have been in our visual schools. The second important aspect of all this is that this free SHS that had been, I thought that President Akufado started talking about free senior high school as far back as two, two, 2008 elections. 2012, he continued it. And in 2016 elections, he won. And 2017, he became the, the presidential candidate. So back to my so, question. So the thing is that how they did not put in place the necessary infrastructure mm -hmm. to ensure the smooth implementation of this process is what baffles us. Why has it taken me us, to ask you before you spoke about it? You did speak about the implementation, I mean, uh, the, 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 how you commended the government for rolling it out in the first place. So when there are issues, why, why has it taken you so long? We are ascertaining the depth of the issues. I can speak surfacely on it. And we, as a political party, after we've been able to attend to some internal challenges, we will be the opposition political party that the people of Ghana want to see, offering an alternative to both MPP and NDC. Let's talk about the 2018 budget. Um, civil society organizations, for example, an NGO, Send Ghana, has said that there are major uh, cuts to some of their locations, to major sectors or <coughs> critical sectors, education, agriculture, um, health care. They've complained about that. W what is the PNC's position on the 2018 budget? Like I said, there are some internal challenges, as you already know, within mm -hmm. the PNC that we need to deal with before we can come and attack some of the issues. My personal view on the budget is that this is an austere budget. And when you talk about austerity in any situation, it means that it imposes hardship on the people. Okay. And it's obvious that the 2018 budget is going to reduce government spending. Now, if you're talking about reducing government spending, it means that government is, not, is going to limit, for instance, budgetary allocation to the road sector, budgetary allocation to the health sector, budgetary allocation to the education sector, and budgetary allocation to, to, to almost every facet of our national development. Now, you are deficit in transport. Roads are deplorable across the country. Foods are not able to be transported from the farming communities to the marketing centers. So farmers have a problem. Our health sector is not in the shape that we want it. Doctor population ratio is not anything that you want to write home about. So when the government comes and government is supposed to be the biggest spender. When government begins to restrict its spending in order to satisfy Britain Woods institutions and their prescriptions. What would do, you have done differently mm -hmm. if you were in charge? Look, doing inflation targeting is an archaic model of economic growth. Look, if you take what is known as the Phillips curve, the Phillips curve has an inverse relation, no, it has a positive relationship. Huh? Or, no, a negative relationship between employment and inflation. Anytime inflation is dropping, what it means is that unemployment is rising. Mm. You are churning out many graduates. 
but they're also giving incentives to companies and they're hoping that as they expand they will take on the uh, unemployed youth and make sure that they are employed yeah. what would you have done differently what would have done is that you spring up deliberately state interventions look i have asked the question why do you sell gridco why do you sell ecg why do you sell ghana airways why do you sell the black star line which used to be our shipping company of ghana why do you sell gntc when we have uchumi running in kenya as their supermarket and today there is a craze for for what we call shopping malls and Melcom and what have you and gntc in those days was running as shopping mall how come that we have closed down the fishing corporation and you know what fishing corporation used to do Instantly, when fish is harvested, they are supplied to the fishing corporation. They are distributed across the length and breadth of this country. So those who go ship, uh, fishing knew that there was ready market for it. Today, go to the shores, and those who go to the middlemen, go to stand there, they will not buy the fish on time. When it is getting decayed, they come and they buy them at knockdown prices. Let's the fisher, go through what the you would have done The fisher folks are losing. So government deliberate intervention in this is important. Look, you come to the energy sector, and some people call it waste to energy, um, for instance, or, or uh, waste as a, as a resource. I have said that you call it bola energy. It will resonate with the people of this country that look, when you are talking about bola, they know that it is waste. So if you call it bola energy, people know that we will be able to generate electricity from bola. If you go to many communities, and if you go to Mfansipim, they use fecal, fecal to be able to generate electricity to power so many things in the school. How come that we are not able to do that? Okay. Solar energy development in this country is restricted to independent power producers who can only generate only 20 megawatts of solar and not above that. Go to Germany and they have 37 megawatts of solar energy alone in the country where we have so much sun, we are not doing it. It appears okay. that our concept of development is that somebody from a white man's land could a superior to the running of our administration by the NGD. That's what uh, the budget tells you? That is what everything, because you see, even the, um, the so-called flagship program that the president wants to unveil, which is the one district, one factory, mm -hmm. what are they looking for? They are looking for the private sector that is stingy, a private sector that is largely profit-oriented to take over the one district, one factory. Okay. That private sector is not to avail itself for a social contract of getting people jobs. Okay. Do you understand? Okay. They will do everything to maximize profit. What is government's own stake in this enterprise? That has not been done. So if government thinks that, look, just come and tell us that you are doing one district, one factory, and then let the private sector come and do it. it I'm sure that they... That it, I mean, it, 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 it doesn't okay. sit well. I've run out of time, and I have to wrap up this conversation. But before I wrap up, your final word for me will be, since 1996, the, your fortunes at elections have <laughs> declined steadily from 3% to 0. Tw uh, two two percent is that does the PNC on its own has any future do you think there can be a future if all of us reason together that the party is beyond personalities that it has to deal with an ideological belief we have to purge ourselves of um, this personality cult that exists within the party and to move ahead they look where I sit the unity of the Nkrumah it's what will lead to an alternative in the Ghanaian political landscape. Anything short of that, we can create multiple groups. If we are not seen to be united, it is difficult for the people of Ghana to entrust their, their confidence in so-called fragmented political parties with the same ideology. Okay. I, sitting here in this your studio, tell Professor Edmond Dele, tell my colleague in the PPP, not Parkway Syndrome, but uh, Dr. Ni Hammond. Hammond, that I have requested that if they are sincere in their hearts, they should come and we sit in this your studio to sign that we are willing to work together as one political party and that I'm willing to subordinate my chairmanship for any one of them if they think fit. Oh, but we should sign that agreement. Let them not be hypocrites and come and sit here when no one is there. Bring the three of them and I'll come and take your pen and sign and that agreement. Sign. That would be interesting. We would love to be a part so of that. So you should broker you should broker that thing. Well challenge them to it. That well, I've challenged them that if they are sincere they should come to they the should studio come and, and, you, sign, and sign and that sign that agreement. That document, yes. So thank you so much for coming. It's been a very interesting conversation. Um hopefully we'll have
a more positive one where it's about all these incumized parties coming together. Bernard Moda is national chairman of the uh, PNC, and we've been having this conversation. He's been my special guest for today, and uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you. You didn't give me the chance to sympathize with um, you yes. on the yes, massive yes. loss. Yes, I... yes. Mm, I please think, do. I think that it is, it is sad news for the media fraternity, for multimedia. And for me as a person, because my relationship with Kaba was something else, mm. I just want to encourage all of you to take very keen interest in your health. Spirituality matters. Our health also matters. And uh, when we do that, maybe we can avert some of these calamities that befall us. My sympathies goes to Valentina and the kid. It is well with our souls. Bernard, thank you so much for coming.